think the purpose of right now, one of the things that um, we're here, we're here because the South Wasco Alliance and the Grange talked together, just you know, folks talked together and said, let's do these workshops because people were interested in food preservation. And one of the things that we want to thread through this is the local know-how, the local history and know-how from here, because there are a lot of folks who are new to the area, um, and there are a lot of folks who have been here a really long time. And so we want to make sure that, that, that um, we're finding out about what it was like, what it's been like here and bringing it forward um, to today. And so, Colette, can you, Leo Peterson, right? Uh -huh. And how long, how long have you, um, tell us your story. Like, when did you... Did you grow up here? Were you born here? No. Uh, we, uh, my husband was born on breaks of the Deschutes, uh, Free Ridge Road, you know, Free Ridge Road. And then when he retired, when we retired, he'd come back to the area. So I've been in Maupin about 50 years since we retired. Okay. And how do you know Colette? Because Colette, you moved here in 60... Uh, 69. Nine. I don't know. How do you <laughs> I don't know. It was before Lucille. I mean, before... It was before you brought her up to us. I don't know. We just knew each other. Yeah, just kindred spirits. <laughs> through, through Marcella, maybe. Yeah, yeah or potlatch. Or I just potlatch. Don't know. Yeah, maybe a, just a potlatch because she's come help with potlatch a lot. No, so potlatch has been going on that long. Oh yeah, long time. Who started that? It was started in the Dalles. I can't remember the days lady's name now years ago, but uh, there's been a potlatch, well I cooked over here for 30 years, so there was a potlatch a little before that in, in Thai Valley. Yeah, and Womack, I don't know what year they started. I don't know what year Womack started either, but not the same, I think, about maybe a little bit more. something. Yeah. And potlatch is about food. It's about, it's about having the meal. It's serving seniors. Well, it said, originally it was said serving seniors, but we serve anybody. Exactly. You don't have to be a senior. And and potlatch is a part of uh, uh, commodity food, right? Yeah, a lot of it. They get a lot of theirs from the gleaners. Okay. And uh, can you tell us more about that, like the cleaning and all of that? Because all of us and anybody can anybody else chime in whatever questions you have. What is the potlatch? I've never heard of that before. Uh, potlatch you, came from from the rendezvous days. They'd have everybody would come together. It was like a potluck. They would call it a potluck. But potlatch was sort of an Indian name. Yeah. For mm -hmm. gathering food and getting it ready for their winter. Hmm. So yeah. And then then they'd have a big feast and yeah work together. And then it turned into now we have senior potlatch, which is. Not many of volunteers. Them, but not many of them left anymore. Yeah, there's only no. two, three. three. Well, two. Uh, there was three, but now there's only two because um, Dufer always had it uh, in the church in Dufer. And the city bought the church, and now they sold the church, so they don't have a place. To, so there's no meal site in Dufer anymore. Mm -hmm. There's just the one in Mosier and Ty Valley. And that's a year, two to three a year. That no, you have every every, every Thursday. Every Thursday. Yeah. Okay. And Mosier has it every Monday and Wednesday. They have it two days a week. Oh. It's also a Meals on Wheels. We take. Oh. Okay. Yeah. We every take food yeah. out to people. This this concept of um, you know uh, bringing people together to share food in the community, sharing the food, preserving you know preserving the food, celebrating it. Um, that's, I think, one thing that all of us here are interested in. You know, we're doing the food pr preservation series now. Today, we're going to be making salsa. We'll, I'll tell, I'll share a little history of salsa with you guys. We, the last one we did was on jam. So, were there any recipes that you guys took in? Did anybody bring in like their favorite local recipes or recipes they got from their grandmothers or their grand? For salsa? No, for for anything. Right? Oh, for anything. For anything, because I know. I, I didn't know you on that. Yeah, yeah. I want it. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. I could have bought, brought something like my strudel recipe. It, it well, you're you're teaching the class. <laughs> <laughs> Sign me up. 
That's we're doing that in November. November, yes we are. You know that on sale? <laughs> now the strudel recipe is, uh, I think it was originated in Germany. Mm -hmm. It came from Germany and my parents, grandparents, some of them came through Ellis Island. Uh huh. And they brought a lot of the recipes with them there. So Ellis Island, and then how did you end up, how did your family end up here? Um, well, my husband was born and raised on the breaks of the Deschutes by Freebridge Road. Okay. And then we, he was working in Portland, and then he retired, and he said, excuse me, getting the hell out of this town, I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't stand Portland any longer. Yeah. So we looked and looked, and finally it landed him off. And, and that was in what year? Uh, 81. In 81, okay. Well, Freebridge has a story too, though, because that actually used to be a, a bridge. Yes. Yeah. Come up, down off Rattle, what they called Rattlesnake Grade. Yeah. And down and across. But it, they was, the bridge that come off of Rattlesnake come in through Shears, on, through Shears Church. Yeah. <coughs> so, so tell us about that. What was, thanks, I didn't know that, Gina. So what, what was, what's the history, what do you, what's the story behind the Free Bridge? bridge? It was just farmers put in a road up the Free Bridge. I don't know that much. That was my husband's side of the family, so I don't really know that much about it. But Shears Bridge, there's a lot of history out on Shears Bridge. Oh. Tell us about that. There was a man by the name of John. John Shear, is that what I call it? John <laughs> 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 I've read a lot of history on Shears Bridge, but I don't know. It, it seemed like his name was John Shear, and he put the bridge in there because there was the old... Uh, road that came from John Day and it came down and across over down the hill. Many people would look, you can see the tracks and down into Shears and then they made the bridge across there mm -hmm. cool. to get on into the Dells. And isn't that where Jane Kirkpatrick wrote the book about that with the hotel that was yeah, yeah. 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 What's the name of the book? What is the name of that book? Uh, she wrote a number of books about The Sweetness of the Soul yeah. was the first one. Yeah. And so I really, is that really the library it. by chance? Should I be. Be. I yeah. If it's, it's not, not, it will be soon. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so on the way, a catalogger for the public library. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Excellent. You got to know the right people. Yeah. So <laughs> write that down for I me. I have it written yeah. down. So, <laughs> so, so on the way over, we were as talking with Lucille about canning and her canning very young, and she had quite an interesting story of how she had to ride a horse over. <laughs> my, this is an old wives' tale, but my my mom was convinced if a lady was having her monthly, she could not can tomatoes because they'd all rot. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, they'd all rot. <laughs> and my sister-in-law was getting ready to can tomatoes, only she couldn't. And so mom told me to get on the horse and ride that 10 miles over there. And, and those tomatoes. <laughs> but that just, you know, I, I'm sure there's nothing to it, but you know, that was just one of those old wives' tales. That's, that's great. Are there any that's other wonderful. stories like that of, of um, you just got to get the crop in, you just got to... You just have to do it. Just yeah. do it. Yeah. Any, do you remember times when there was, um, like I know this last year there was a kind of a bumper crop of apricots and it's, you know, you Colette, you were talking about how when it comes in, you just gotta like do it and do it now, right? Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, um, were there any years that you guys remember where there was just so much of something that everybody had to come together and just do it? Well, that, well, I was raised in the Midwest, and, and when we had a bumper crop, they just shared. It was, they took it into the little. There was a little town about the size of High Valley, maybe. And you just brought it in there on Saturday and put it out. People took what they wanted and traded. Just traded. That was it. Same with produce. Uh, same with poultry, chickens, and anything like that. It was just shared. Yeah. Kind of like this year, I noticed all the apple trees are loaded. Yeah. And just loaded. Well, Lucille mentioned right. welcome, everybody. Um, we're just, we're interviewing Lucille, so we've got it, we're taping it right now, and um, just so everybody knows. And um, you you had mentioned um, uh, gleaning. 
Could we glean those apples, do you think? Sure. Sure. That sure. Sure. Yes, you the landowners. Yeah. So, They'd be glad. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Any, most anybody, if they have an excess, they'd, they'd let you come in and glean. Are we gleaning, is, are we actively gleaning now in this community that you know of? I don't think One so. year, the orchards let us go in and glean <coughs> out here. Actually, they were through picking. And I don't know what happened. We were never invited back, so. <laughs> I don't know. Tom McDowell would be able to tell you about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because he gets the apples up there every he year. He gets a lug of apples every year. And then uh, you just, if you take what you want and pay by donation, and it goes to the historical mm -hmm. society, I think, all the time, it proceeds from it. I know See, that, go, go, go. Sorry, I was going to say, I know that the, the blueberry fields just right up here yeah. used to be open and then they didn't open anymore. Do you know? I don't know why. What's going they got on? automatic pickers. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you why. Oh. Because uh, Dr. Miller owns that property. Who? Right there, Dr. Miller does. Yeah. Um, he's actually located out in the Hillsborough area and he has a big contract with New Seasons. And so it's a big um, money maker for him. But they do sell blueberries. I got a big old pallet for 30 bucks from them this year. So I know I sell soap and face washes to the daughter. And so if you guys want blueberries during that season, let me know and I can try to get you guys hooked up for that. Yeah, usually they let you go in and pick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the birds do it now. Yeah. <laughs> Lucille, you said that you talked about your family coming through Ellis Island. And then did they immediately go to the Midwest? What was your, what's your like my my great grandma and grandpa came to Ellis Island and they didn't know each other at that time but my my grandpa had a sister named Mary and they were put on what they called at that time the orphan train mm. and sent to the Midwest mm. and they ended up in Ohio and then I don't know when <coughs> they migrated to Illinois and that's where I was raised in Illinois and my one grandma come from covered wagon from Kentucky to Illinois. So, you know, it's, um, And then how did you meet your husband? Somewhere along the way, because then you went right to, he was retired. We there was a lot that happened. <laughs> <laughs> we both worked for the same freight line company in Portland. Mm -hmm. He was a top foreman and I headed the uh, data processing center. But how did you get from Illinois to Portland? What was that? What happened? Well, during the war, um, they took all my brothers to the service, and we had this 3,000 acres, and they was just mom and dad and myself, well, my deaf sister and myself, and we couldn't run it. So they just closed up the house, and we came out, and they worked in the shipyards until mm -hmm. after the mm -hmm. war. And then we went back home, and, and my brothers weren't content. They'd been out and seen <laughs> the world. They weren't content to stick them out. How are you going to keep them down on the farm? Yeah, <laughs> after they've seen Gay Marie, you know. <laughs> what was it like coming back to the farm after being gone so long? Well, I was young enough, it didn't bother me, but it must have killed my mother because she'd gotten used to electricity and running water and everything out here, and then went back to nothing, you know. So then we was there, I think, three or four years before finally that my dad said, that this is it, we'll go back and we'll come back out here. There's a couple of my brothers was shot up pretty bad in the war, and they couldn't take the extreme temperature changes back there. And they came back out, and Daddy said, well, let's just go back. So they sold out, and we came back then. Was there a Grange there? Pardon? Was there a Grange there where, where your farm was in the Midwest? I don't think so. I must have been 13, 14. And how old were you the first time you came out during the war? Uh, let's see. 35. I must have been about 10. About 10. Uh, maybe a little bit younger, because the war was over in 45. Yeah. And I was born in 35, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have to say, too, besides strudel, Lucille's pies were always fought over. <laughs> you, you had them at bake sales, and oh, yes. I remember we gave them a couple of times, but they were gone like that. Those were the first things to go, as I remember, at yes. bake sales. Yeah. Yes. Oh, this is seal. We've got to do a pie making. Oh, we're so good. <laughs> and if you want to really get into pie making on a regular basis, I have a recipe that you make. Of, um, it's like a mix. You make it all up except for the the crust, the, the white the ingredients. Wood, egg wood. Oh, yeah. okay. and then you measure out five cups of the oh, crust, wow. the mix with 
a little bit of water and a vinegar oh, and egg, ooh. and then you got enough for two or three pies at a time. Ooh, or this wow. big, the big batch, I think it takes like 12 and a half cups of flour and five mm -hmm. cups of Crisco, and you use Crisco, you don't use that other brand. Right. <laughs> and, then it, and then it's shelf stable, so then it can sit in your cabinet for yeah, a while. Yeah, it can just stay in the cabinet, yeah. Pull it out when you need it. We were raised on Crisco, too. Yes. <laughs> Me, too. Yeah. yeah. So, well, originally back east. When I was a kid, we was raised with lard. Lard, yeah. yeah. <laughs> lard, lard works really good. Mm -hmm. Just as good or not, better than Crisco, but it's sort of hard to find anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's going to kill you. I guess everything <laughs> is. She <laughs> tastes good. Yeah. All the good stuff's bad for you. Oh yeah. yeah. So did you develop your own recipes, like cooking for forty or fifty people and potlatch? Yes. Um, is a lot different than cooking for a family. Yeah. Uh, did you develop your own recipes? Yes, a lot of those things. Yes. We had a cookbook out. I don't know if there's any of them left around or not that we put out, and a lot of the recipes were in there. For Is it that. this country cookbook here? No, that's the Grange cookbook. Oh, okay. yeah. did, did you get one of the ones? I've got one. I hoarded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should republish it. Yeah, that's a great idea, actually, especially for learning from you. Yeah, there's yeah, there's a lot of uh, recipes in there that we. Use. When did you start cooking for crowds? Well, let's see. We came out '81. There used to be a little man, and I don't remember his name, and he was cooking basically pretty much at the Dew Drop Inn, and he got so he couldn't do it, and I went over and um, helped your in-law, uh, Marcella. No. No. Uh, <laughs> she was cooking there at the time. Paul's wife. Oh, Geraldine. Geraldine, she was cooking there mm -hmm. at the time, and mm -hmm. I went over to help, and then, then we outgrew the dewdrop, and mm -hmm. that's about the time the school closed, so then we went and moved over to the school. So it's been a long, long time. Yeah, it's been a long time, so, yeah. When did the school close? Uh, High school. I don't remember. <laughs> 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 must have been in the 80s. Oh. Must have been in the, yeah, must have yeah. been in the 80s. Barbara's, Barbara Mason, she went to school there. Yeah, because mm. Womack closed in the early 90s, yeah. and Ty had closed before Womack. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. What were your big, what were your big learnings in, in cooking? I love, I like the way Colin said it, cooking for crowds, that's, that's kind of catchy, we could do that as a bumper sticker. <laughs> um, but were there any big, like, oh yeah, this is, this is what you have to do to double a recipe or triple it or, you know, 70 times what you have to, you know, make it. Learning, learning, learning. Well, I, I, learning. Know, I just sort of dump stuff together. <laughs> just try it. <laughs> Experiment. I'm sorry. I'm very, very True good. cooks don't have recipes. I just make it work. Very, 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 Make sure you're, you cook it, process it long enough. 
whatever you're cooking, whatever you're canning. Like green beans takes forever and a year to process. To get them. It, even in a pressure cooker, it takes longer than a water bath. And I never had a pressure cooker until the last few years. Mostly I just had water baths. And it takes like hours. Hours for green beans. Yeah. Susie Mitchell yeah. raises, Hi, Susie. raises a huge garden and cans and has mm -hmm. for yeah. years and years and years. Yeah. At, she's very knowledgeable at both. Yeah. Growing and that green beans and tomatoes you have to watch. Yeah, you have to watch really careful. You know, peaches and fruits basically yeah. you just yeah. let them in the hot water bath mm -hmm. until you make sure there is. And I got into the habit when the when there was a shortage of canning lids years ago, heating the lids first before yeah. you put them on the jar, mm -hmm. and then when you take them out of the the processor, turn them upside down. Uh, for at least 10, 15 minutes. I've never mm -hmm. done that. Uh, mm -hmm. I've never done that. Yeah, mm -hmm. turn them upside down and let them set for about 10, 15 minutes, and then turn them back up, and there we've got a better ceiling ratio there too. Mm -hmm. That's how my mom. Mm -hmm. That's how my mom taught me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same oh. She'd always have a little pan with the lids mm -hmm. on the in the in the water mm -hmm. to heat, and she'd always turn them upside down. Yeah. yeah. When did pressure cookers come out? Who knows when the story behind pressure cookers? I, well, I, I think they've been out for years and years and years. They go way, way back because commercial canning, they use pressure. But home pressure cookers, I, I don't know. I don't know. Right my grandmother the war, had them. Right after the war was when they appeared in my house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Because the, the original ones oh. <laughs> had these... Things yeah, that you yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. the hole in the ceiling. I, yeah. I still have one of them. Yeah, that's what I yeah. use. Selena so uses Marcellus, so. Yeah. Uh -huh. But now they just, you know, laugh. Yeah. But the original ones, they boy, they were they were dandies. Yeah, <laughs> they could go anywhere. <laughs> but yeah. they'll never break. <laughs> so. But yeah, I, like I said, when they came into it, I don't know. So how about, when, when did you start doing salsa? Oh, okay. Other time, no, I did, I did it in Portland. It must have been in the 60s or 70s. Because that's really, I didn't eat salsa until much later in life. Mm -hmm. 60s, 70s, about 70s, I imagine. It was still in Portland. Mm -hmm. How about you? I, it was later on too, but I yeah, started me. Yeah. yeah, and right now I've got a really good one, a uh, green salsa that I make fresh, mm -hmm. oh. Oh. and it's really good. Use mm -hmm. tomatillos and one jalapeno without the seeds. And, mm -hmm. I just made up a bunch of green yeah. out, out of tomatillos. Mm -hmm. So Susie, if we one thing that this that this that's starting to happen now is people are wanting to grow things like this coming year. Yeah. If we were intentional about growing some of the mm -hmm. things and then we could do your recipe, yeah. for instance. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if we can grow tomatillos here. I imagine we could. And oh, my I've, got, and I've got them in my garden. Oh, yeah. we can. And they, they, I never replanted after the first time mm -hmm. I did them. They just come up everywhere. <laughs> they <laughs> like it out here. Yes. <laughs> so Kate, maybe that's what I can my yeah. yeah. Actually, you know, we have the same problem. When we start them for like a week, and they finally started <laughs> turning. So you start them. Uh, we just didn't water them or anything. Yeah. Right. Okay. And this they is, started turning. This is some of the learning that we we um, you know. Are you up here in Pine Hall? I live right up the street here in Womack. Next to me. So, so it might yeah, be yeah. elevation. It might be. I don't know if there's that much elevation between Wallach and Pine Hollow difference. No, no she I lives in Thai, and they, they have about a two or three week longer growing season. Oh, and, but her soil also is sand. Chilis That's right. Chilis has left sand, yeah. heat, and not mm -hmm. a lot of water. Right. So, so they do great. And so maybe I'm watering them too much here. Mm -hmm. Well, what's interesting is if we, you know, but this is, if you think about the cycle, the preservation workshops are kind of the end of the cycle for this year, this season, right? But next year, if we got organized, we could grow things, right, in yeah. 2020, and we could be really intentional about that and figure out the, you know, from you yeah. guys, what, what what could we grow that would be really successful here? And it mm -hmm. is different in different pockets. Ty yeah. is different than, you know, Gina's finding out here in yeah. Womack, that, or in Pine Hollow, it's really yeah. hard to get her tomatoes to get, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. so
so I quit watering mine. Yeah, that's what we did. That's too. so interesting. So that's great learning. You know, yeah. she quit watering them. Another good thing that grows abundantly and will keep forever is that acorn squash. Acorn squash. Oh, yeah. You can just store them in a cool place and they'll keep all winter long. Now, in, in Thai Valley, we're growing acorn squash and I have, we have powdery mildew and it's really, I'm fighting it right now, but um, it's, it's, it's slowing production because, you know, it's too, it's, the conditions down there. Yeah. Huh. The first uh, pressure cooker was developed in 1679. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> the the six-quart pressure cooker uh, was and it has a picture up here. It was 1890. 1890. Wow! All right. Well, guess what? The history of salsa. Oh, did you guys know? Okay, about the history of salsa. Um, it originated with the Inca people. It was a combination of chilies, tomatoes, and other spices that's traced to the Aztecs, Mayans, and Incans. And the Spaniards first encountered this when they did their conquest of Mexico in 1519 to 1521. And it marked the beginning of the history of salsa. Wow. Sauce. And the Aztec lords combined tomatoes with chili peppers, ground squash seeds, which we could try, and consumed them mainly as a condiment served with turkey, venison, which we have here, Lobster, not so much, <laughs> and fish. Uh, and this com combination was sub subsequently called sal salsa uh, in, in uh, 1571. And then it went to New Orleans. The first person to make it and begin manufacturing it was in Louisiana in, in 1916. And a year later, La Victoria Foods started the company. Wow. Guys know La Victoria? Yeah. yeah. And then in 1941, the La, La Victoria Sales Company began to market the salsa line, and they started to do it in red and green taco and enchilada sauces. Wow. So who knew? So today, that's 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 yeah. where we're picking up. That's where we're at today. But maybe you know there can be a South Wasco, you know, or a special, you know, Barlow Gate Grange version version that's special <laughs> that's made here. And that's why we need the seal. That's what I'm for. Now we end up making a big old manufacturing. We could use some jobs around here. That's why we're partnering together. That's what the South Wasco Alliance is about. You know. So, um, what do you think? I do. Does anybody have any other questions? Welcome, please. Hi. Sorry, we're late. I, no. I got lost. We came up here and then I, I couldn't remember. I was thinking it was next door and then we drove down to Thai Valley. It's great to hear. I'm but, so um, glad. I was talking to Elizabeth last night and she said that she puts, um, she dries some tomatoes and peppers and she puts, she'll like, um, you know, soak them in the salsa and then it makes like kind of a richer flavor. Mm. Mm. So it's like a turbo. It's like yeah. really infuses yeah. it. Yeah. So do you want to introduce? I just, everybody know everybody? I don't no. know. I don't think let's, so. Let's start. <laughs> Susie, Susie, Susie Mitchell, Mitchell and I'm Claude Cox. And I'm Alicia Everett. And Kate Willis. Jane Van Vactor. Allie O'Connor. Caitlin Huntley. Glenn Huntley. Melissa Huntley. Regina Carey. Gail Schill. Michael Kurtz. Rusty Peterson. Rusty Whitney. Yeah. And Rusty is with us. He's doing some documentaries so that we have records of uh, Gail and Rusty are involved in the historical society. So. Mm -hmm. And they're working on a really cool, I mean, I'm going to plug it. It's so cool. They're working on a really cool um, Barlow Gate grid to it. Mm -hmm. And so you, you teach them often then? Yeah, my husband was a fourth grade teacher, oh. and I substitute in a, a sped aid at the school. Oh, sped aid? What is that? Special ed. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the library. Uh, yeah, and I'm the, the cataloger for the public library. Wow, which is great. Is okay. that the new public library? The one in Moffat. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Yes. Very exciting. When is that going to be done? Um, well, we're hoping for it to be done um, and have a ribbon cutting in October, November, and hopefully be open by the new year. Wow. Is, is the hope, so but we don't have exact dates. You're the librarian in Moffat? Uh, I no, I'm not the librarian. I just catalog all of the books. Oh, okay. Yes, our new librarian. Her name is Bronte. And she lives right across the street from me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Your husband's a fishing guy. 
Yes, correct. Yep, she just got married um, yeah. in August. Yeah, they had a big wedding there. Yes. Walked wow. off the street. Yes. It was really, really nice. Yes, yes. So I just catalog. All right, well, I think we're, I'm going to take Paulette's cue that we're getting ready to get started. <laughs> <laughs> these are lemon cucumbers. Oh, my God. Wow. These are patty pans. Oh, Ooh. What are these Not called? Patty, patty pans. pans. Patty pans. Those are beautiful. Is it a, like a squash? It's a squash. Okay. And I've got tons more. <laughs> are these so <laughs> These are for your garden? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here, here's tomatillos. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. The ones in the like. store are this size, but a lot of mine are this yeah. size. Yeah. So. Oh. But but it doesn't matter. You just yeah. you can do it. You just need more of that. Yeah. Food yeah. processes. They are so good. Call it. I've seen little cucumbers that have always been round and yellow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These no, these are these are lime crisps. Lime, lime crisps. But crisps. There is no they have cucumbers. they have I've never seen that. They have a thin skin. My grandkids just eat them like yeah, that. Yum. I want to smell it. Oh, I my just love them. Just like oh my gosh, that smells so yard. good. And now this is yeah. a spoiler. No, that's a cucumber. A cucumber. cucumber. Yeah. Yeah. Cucumber. Yeah. 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 I've got I mean, tons. I got tons of cucumbers. Bring it on, Lemon one. Oh boy. Jalapenos. Those are lemon yeah, cucumbers. Here's the lemon cucumbers. Here. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. We were both like this. We, all we heard was lemon cucumbers. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the lemon cucumbers yeah. we've ever seen. Yeah. Wow. These are amazing. Um, They're yummy. Just They're so cut yummy. up with some onion and vinegar and just set them on your counter. Delicious. And then, yeah. Mm -hmm. And just set them on your counter for a couple hours. These and then are striped aromas. These oh, really make like good salsa. Oh. Lemon yes. Susie, would you maybe you could give us a tour of your gardens? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and just so we could, you yeah. could tell us what you. Well, want. I noticed too that I have started to get a little blossom rot. Oh, okay. the bottom too. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. That means it's calcium deficient. Okay. And so, so I noticed that I have that on oh. some zucchini actually also. Oh, well, it's probably <laughs> calcium. Yeah. So oh my gosh. You in your garden that is so beautiful. Isn't that something? Oh, I just throw I don't know. extra. I don't know. Oh my gosh. 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 Oh my gosh